Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. Yeah, because I, I, the people who are, you know, the, the, the status quo in power, they are looking towards, you know, white daddy to give them jobs, to give them credibility, to give them acceptance. And so when they hear somebody who's strong, black, say something, it, it's almost like the Jesse Lee Peters is the word. They got to uh, separate themselves from that. So even the... Uh, the so-called like civil rights community, they want to separate themselves from the, quote, radicals, they want to separate themselves from people who are, like, you can't go out there and say, well, well we're going we're gonna to protest this, this uh, Korean market and we're going to start our own black one. That would I, I, uh, immediately get protests from civil rights organizations, mm-hmm. from MSNBC, from every, you know, the Negro college professor they could they could put on TV. They're all going to speak out against black folks working together as black folks. Brother, let me give you an example. This is this ahead, happened brother. in the past. I'll give you the perfect example of what you're talking about. When the Koreans attacked this sister in the in the, in the um, neighborhood in Brooklyn, this was back when Dink, David Dinkins was mayor. It was one of the few times where the black community responded exactly the way they should have. They didn't get violent with the Koreans. They boycotted and said, we're not going to purchase nothing from your store. They did exactly what you're supposed to do. And guess what happened? David Dinkins went down. He was the mayor with cameras and went into the Korean grocery store and brought stuff and ate it right in front of the camera. There you go. What a and, cool. there you ha- and there's the problem in a nutshell. Basically spitting in the whole face of our community. So now, so what is the message? The message is, I don't give a damn how much they disrespect you, nigga. You better go in that store and break those Koreans rich. Exactly. What's wrong with you? That's and this is, this is the type of leaders. These are the people that we look into for change. There's no right. such thing as black leaders. Doesn't exist. Right. That that is that's who they put you know, up front to be the spokesman, you know, on all the talking head shows, people who were support, whatever. It's like, uh, you want the gay rights people, let's get some black people up there and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, get them to be the spokesman. Or let's get such and such. That's who they put up there a lot of times to try and, uh, because they want black folks' attention to be focused on that. They want it to be focused on there's a new civil rights struggle. There's a new such and such struggle, as if the other one was was complete and everything is good, so we can move on to the next one. But you have two thirds of black folks who that trickle down civil rights movement never trickle down to them, and they just completely skip over that. They just say, okay, we just give you an EBT card and, and, and shut the fuck up. And, and, and that's the thing, basic attitude. Another thing is that see, there's a real reason why when when we bring the discussion to nationhood that you ain't going to get the support of black leaders. Black leaders is going to steer you away from that concept as much as possible. And the reason why? Accountability. See, if you're in Congress or you're in Senate, they got your record. They can see how you voted. They can see who owns you. See, in the black community, since we don't have any organized structure, um, you can just go out there and make all the promises that you want to and don't have to keep them, and you don't have no accountability. You can say anything. Say and do anything, and your money flow does not stop. So why would, you, why would you want to get black folks in a situation where they can hold you accountable? So you're never going to hear nation out of these Negroes' mouths. None of these Negroes, and I don't get, especially these Cornell West and all these people that everybody think is so impressive. That nigga ain't going to touch nationhood with a 10-foot pole. You know, you know here's, here's the thing, and, 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 and it just feeds into this whole thing about, it, it, it's, in order to go ahead and justify your, your position, you go ahead and you being rich, you got to have poor folks. 
Yep. And it's simple as that. No, you yep. know, no analyzing no other way. It's just simple as that. We got to go ahead and keep because they because it, Al Sharpton made his money, got on the TV show talking about black issues. But I don't see him setting up no industry, nothing. He knows these th- problems still exist. He knows them problems are still there. And he ain't done to me. The other way, you, you can go ahead and see what he, he Al Sharpton said. He set up an industry. He set up an industry called Al Sharpton and, and I go ahead and criticize Barack Obama for walking these goddamn streets in Chicago, know the fucking problem firsthand, and to me, he ain't done a damn thing. Because they did set up an industry, Rob. They set up Barack Obama Incorporated and Al Sharpton Incorporated. That was the industry. So I, get, I guess you're right. That would, that's what the whole thing. That's why I never could understand why black folks, this is a, uh, like they say, well, let's vote for Barack Obama so we can put him in office. And, I'm, and I was always saying the same thing since day one. Why? So he can have lifetime secret service and a pension? Mm. I mean, what is it doing for me? And I keep using this analogy over and over again, and I'll keep using it. If you come home, you got a wife. Picture you coming home to your wife and saying, listen, baby, I know I'm supposed to take care of this house and pay the rent and give you money and stuff like that, but my girlfriend is really having a hard time. <laughs> and as soon as I take care of her and her situation, make sure she's right, I got you. Would that go down? Nope. Yeah, in our community, I've had arguments with black folks who telling me, well, you can't expect him to look out for our interests. So what the fuck am I voting for him for? I, uh, just so I, I can, just so I can see, I can visually see, oh, man, look at that guy. He's in office and he looked just like me. Let me go back to my box and sleep on the park bench. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen a community where they will fight you if you say that the representative should actually represent them. That, that's an argument in our community. I've had fights with, with black folks. Oh, you can't expect him to look out for us. He's the president of the United States. He ain't the president of black people. That's right, brother. Well, then what the that's hell right, am I brother. voting for him for? That's right, brother. You think any think Jew is going to put another Jew in office if he ain't ever represent Jewish interests? And then go, well, hey, that's guys, right. I know I'm Jewish, but, hey, you should be happy just because I'm Jewish. I know I, I can't right. do nothing for you as a Jew, but hey, you, you go to sleep at night knowing that there's a Jewish man in office. Vote for me. And nobody does that shit. But it, in our community, it's looked at as logical. We just don't expect. I remember when the whole Reverend Wright thing, it's like the whole Barack Obama's campaign oh. for running for office when he first ran should have been a, a picture of somebody going, shh, don't, don't say anything because they might know he's black. You know what, man? That whole Reverend Wright thing, man. I, I, oh man. I, I thought maybe he would have came out and said, you know, so damn what? So fucking what? Nope, he didn't. He made excuses. And, and this he's is a politician, man. At the end of the day, a politician. Think about it. I, and I had put this on a post on my Facebook page. You know how you know all politicians are crooks? Mm. Because who in their right mind is going to spend millions of dollars on a position that only pays a hundred thousand? Hmm. When you're running for president, you damn near spending a billion dollars. Where are they getting that money from? For a position that pays 250000 Well, Where are they getting all that money from? You know, and, and, and that was something else. You know, they collected all this money, the crime broke. The, the, all, all these neighborhoods need this cash, but they, they can't go ahead and put that in. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand how you can keep on voting for these rich, these rich and extra rich people. That's why, Rob, I came to the conclusion, like, is me personally, my role, what I feel that I can do, and, I, and, I've, and I've tried to do this ever since I've gotten online, my job is to clown black leadership. My job is to show that these people are insignificant, that they are a, a, a cancer to our community, and to totally invalidate them in the eyes of the people. That's my. Everybody has their work that they got to do. That's my job to clown I, black I like leadership. I, I love your job because if as long as we keep looking to these black representatives, these black leaders, these preachers, whoever wants to sit up there and call themselves a representative of black people, as long as we're paying attention to them, we're going to stay stuck in the same situation that we are in. That's why I'm trying to get the focus on nationhood. 
social, economic, and political control, and infrastructure. My whole conversation is based on that. Not go to this so-and-so's church, not follow this so-and-so leader. Give I could give a damn about any of them. 